in the Spring Boot REST API as custom responses holding given here. Hello everyone, very warm welcome to Think Constructive. I am Isha. In this session, I will be discussing custom response handling in the Spring Boot REST API project. This session is going to be very useful because in each and every REST API project, there is a need to handle responses in a custom way. All right, so stay tuned, watch the session till the end so that you don't miss upon anything. And in this session, we will be evolving further our Cloud Vendor API application. All right, so let us quickly start with the custom response handling discussion. Let us first see what we understand from custom response handling. See, there is a generic response, something like this. What you can see on your screen right now, in the JSON format, we are getting vendor ID, vendor name, vendor address, and vendor phone number, just like that. Or I can have uh, only a message returning in the response or only the HTTP status. But what if, if my project requirement says that I want all these responses, something like this. What if my project requirement says that I want all three of them or, or some more stuffs also? So what we should be doing in that case? In such cases, we usually call such responses as custom responses. And you can see on your screen, I have filled inside data, the complete JSON object. What we are seeing here on the left side here, you can see inside data, the complete custom response is filled in. Then we have also HTTP status and message here. All right, so in today's session, we will see how can we build this kind of custom response and return back as a REST API response. All right, so let us quickly start with the demonstration. I will be using our Cloud Vendor API application, which we have built in our previous sessions. Just in case, if you missed watching those sessions, links are given in the description as well as in the tag section above. Please make use of those links and also I have given the GitHub repository link. So if you wish, you can take code directly from the GitHub repository also. Either way is fine. All right. Here is the IntelliJ ID editor. I'm using IntelliJ ID editor for the coding purposes. You can use any other Java editor, whichever you are comfortable with. All right. So this is my cloud vendor API application which we have built in our previous sessions. And in each Spring Boot session, I'm adding some of the stuffs to this application and this application is evolving. All right, so I'll just show you quickly all the layers which we have already added. For the detailed explanation, you can capture the link from the description section below or from the card section above. All right, so what layers we have added in this application, there is a controller layer cloud vendor controller we have added we have added service layer in which service interface as well as service simple we have added all right we have added repository interface here we have added model layer here all right and also we have done exception handling so all three exception classes are also added here okay so now i'll just open cloud vendor controller layer this is my cl cloud vendor controller, okay? I'll quickly bring up the application and will first show you what kind of responses this application is currently returning and what changes then we'll do to get the desired response, okay? So you can see my Spring Boot application is up and running. Okay, I'll go to Postman and uh, we'll first create one cloud vendor. So the request body is already populated. So we'll be creating vendor ID C5 right now. Okay, I'll just say send. I'm just getting a simple response. Cloud vendor created successfully. Okay, now when I would want to get this cloud vendor C5, I'll just say get by ID. See, the URL is populated here and C5 is my cloud vendor ID. So I'm going to query now C5. You can see in the response what we are getting. 
we are getting a plain simple json response wherein i am getting all the four fields of vendor id so vendor id vendor name vendor address and vendor phone number all these four fields i am getting here now what do i want in addition to this result i would also want to capture http status code and a proper message so how do i do that in order to do that we need to do some code changes now we will see what all code changes we should be doing in order to get the custom response which is currently getting displayed in our screen all right so now i'll terminate the application we'll do the desired code changes and then we'll see the output okay So my application is terminated now in order to do custom response handling what will i do first of all i'll quickly add a package here let's say response package okay so i'll call this package as response and inside this response i will just add a java class let us name it as response handler which is quite explanatory okay so i will add a response handler class and will add it to my git project also because my project is getting synced up with git all right so here is my custom response handler class inside this class i will be adding a static method to build or to generate the response all right Let's say public static so what my response builder method will return it will return response entity and let's say of type object okay let us name this method as response builder okay and what arguments that method should expect is first of all the kind of message what we want to display okay and uh, then and then we can have http status okay and the last argument will be result basically the result whatever we are getting back from the database okay so i'll just say response object all right now let us implement this method what this response builder method should do it should construct the response we should be having all these three things three arguments inside it and should return the response all right for that purpose i will be making use of map and its first data type that is a key data type will be string and the value data type i'll be using as object all right let me just import yeah okay so i will name it as response new hash map all right now we should start putting value inside this map what i should be doing response dot put so first thing what i'll be keeping here as message okay you can uh, keep any other key name also it's up to you in our case i am going to use it as message itself okay and its value will be the message which is coming here okay will be passed here all right next thing response dot put the next argument is http status okay so i will give key name as http status you can keep any other name also that is perfectly fine it's totally up to your project requirement okay then i will have response dot put and my third argument that is my response object okay so like in our example we have seen that as data so i will have in this case key name as data and value as response object okay so what we have done we have built a map which is having now three keys message http status and data okay and now what i'll be doing i'll be using this map in order to return this custom response back all right so what should i do i'll just say return new response entity because 
you can notice my method is returning response entity okay in the response entity constructor we should be passing two things first thing will be the response and and second argument will be http status okay so the moment we call this method with these three arguments finally we will be getting a response entity back which should be holding all three things in its response back all right now let us see where we should call this in order to generate the custom response or in order to build the custom response all right so i'll come back to my controller layer and i will do the changes in my get cloud vendor details okay so in this get cloud vendor details basis on the vendor id we are getting the cloud vendor details back currently what we are doing whatever we are getting we are returning it as it is that is why in the postman you notice we are getting the response like this that means whatever we are getting back from the database we are returning as it is to the client and that's where we are getting this kind of response okay now we'll see what changes we should be doing now here in order to get our custom response okay so what we have done just now we have created our response handler now it's a time to call this response handlers response builder method all right so what i'll be doing i'll be since it is a static method i'll just be calling response handler dot response builder okay and what three things we should be passing we should be first thing we should be passing as message so what message we thought we should be passing requested vendor details are given here okay so i'll be giving the message here requested vendor details given here okay okay second argument is http status code okay since we are handling a positive scenario right now so i'll just say http status okay okay and then the third thing is the response object that means whatever we were returning earlier as it is we should be passing that thing here okay so i'll just cut it from here and we'll pass it here okay and i am going to remove this return statement from here because what my response builder is doing finally it is returning a final custom response entity back okay so i'll just say return and what my response builder is returning it is now returning response entity that means i should also be changing this get cloud vendor details return data type to response entity object done all right so what we have done we have created a response handler class then its response builder method which is finally constructing a custom response and finally we have called it from the controller get mapping here okay so now let us bring up the application and see what we were expecting whether that is done or not okay i'll just save it and start my spring boot application so let us check the logs cool so what is it telling started stress demo application that means my application my spring boot application is up and running okay and here are the changes i have done changes in my get by id or get cloud vendor details method all right so let us go back to postman and now if i will execute the same query what should i get but before that i should be creating the data also okay so let us create this c5 cloud vendor information i have got cloud vendor created successfully now let us do get by id on that that means what id we have created c5 now let us again query it what we have got this time c data with the with all the cloud vendor details then http status okay and then message requested vendor details are given here okay 
so i hope this part is very very clear to you so that's how you can return the custom responses back to the rest client and this is something which is going to be very very useful because in the projects we have variety of kind of requirements to handle responses differently or to have the custom responses is something which is mandatory requirement all right so there what you need to do you need to really understand what kind of response format is actually expected and that kind of format you can build with the help of response handler class which we have just now discussed all right so just a quick summary for uh, today's session we have seen how the generic response will look like and then we have transformed that generic response to custom response. We have done changes in, in our Cloud Vendor API application. We added response package and inside that response handler and the response builder method. And then we have done changes in the controller get by ID or get Cloud Vendor details method. And finally, we have executed and checked how are we getting the custom response back. All right. So if you have any doubts, any questions, please ask your doubts in the comment section below. I will try to reply to you as soon as possible. If you liked any particular part of the session, please tag that timeline in the description box below. That will be helping everyone. Thank you everyone for watching the session. I hope you found it useful. This session is going to be very helpful in your Spring Boot REST API projects for custom response handling. So watch the complete session and try out all the examples. Then you'll get the complete benefit of it. All right. And I hope you like the session. So hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. Also, I would like to request you to share the session details and channel details with more and more people. So we grow together more stronger as a community. There are more sessions on Java and Spring Boot available on this channel. So feel free to explore them. Thank you once again. See you in the next session. Bye for now.